Hello, good evening, welcome to a Monday night episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. How was your weekend? Did, did it all go okay? Did it all go as planned? We had a lovely, uh, proper busy weekend, as you can probably imagine. It was our penultimate weekend in sunny Spain, so we've made the best of it as much as we possibly can, and it's been absolutely brilliant. But look, I'm really interested to know what's going on with your weekend. If you want to drop me a message, it's brett at touradate.co.uk, even better would be if you drop me a line on one of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could follow, give us a little like, maybe, it would be, well, that'd be really top-notch. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show, and welcome to our summer home here in the beautiful Costa Calada region of sunny Spain. Thanks for joining us once again for our regular visit to those dusty studio archives of old-time radio shows. Right here at our summer home, our summer moorings, should we call it, many years ago in Beer. Uh, we used to have some friends who had a caravan, a Beerhead caravan site. And they were an older couple, but they'd been there for many, many years. And they had a caravan and they had a beautiful garden all around it. And they did have a sign saying summer moorings, which I thought was quite nice. I've launched a supporter page where you'll find some extra content. It's at patreon.com forward slash Brett's old time radio show but it's time now for our latest episode a bit of comedy for a Monday night with Tony Hancock, Sid James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes and Kenneth Williams in Hancock's Half Hour. This one is called Hancock in the Police and uh, as you can probably imagine it is a bit of a disaster. It's episode 18 of series 4. This is Hancock's Half Hour. We present Tony Hancock, Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes and Kenneth Williams in... Hancock's half hour. Well, here we are. Situation's vacant. Oh! Me back! <laughs> it's catching me again. I, I think I'll have to have a few days in bed. You stay where you are. It's always the same. As soon as I get the situation's vacant page, your back starts playing you up. I tell you, my back is hurting me. Well, it's your own fault. You shouldn't rush downstairs so quickly to tear this page out and burn it. <laughs> now, I beat you to it this morning, though, so here we are. Situation's vacant. <laughs> Look, uh, don't, don't let's rush into this. Uh, we're bound to get some work sooner or later on the stage. Let's, let's hang on a little longer. You've been hanging on for 18 months. <laughs> it's obvious they've forgotten you. Either that or there's no demand for our sort of act these days. <laughs> Hancock and Kerr, the whistling hillbillies. <laughs> it's still a good act. I'm not denying that. They're still talking about us in Barnsley. Well, well, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. You've been left behind. You didn't keep up with the times. You should be whistling rock and roll. We tried that. And why didn't it succeed? <laughs> because it was you! It was you! You were the drag! I'll never forgive you. Never. Getting your fingers caught in your teeth halfway through giddy up a ding dong. <laughs> and, and furthermore, last week, the final insult doing top town from Cheam without asking me. <laughs> no, me old cobber, she's right. It's us for the situation's vacant. Well, let's see. Jen's hairdresser wanted in Buller Whale. No, no. Don't fancy going to India. <laughs> Here's a good one. Here's a good one. Caretakers wanted. Eight pound a week, all found. Suit elderly couple. No, I'm not dressing up again. <laughs> It won't be for long. That's what you said last time. Three years you had me going round collecting a widow's pension. <laughs> it seemed the natural thing to do. After all, I spent six months in the attic while you collected me life insurance. Plate layer on the Gold Coast Railway, any good? Oh, he doesn't know anything about railways. He doesn't have to. Plate layer, plate layer. It's set in the tables in the restaurant car. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Here we are. This is us. Look. Big black letters. A man's job. Sounds like hard work. No, 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 no. 
It's the police force. Look, if you are between 19 and 30, 5 foot 9 or over in good health, why not join the police force? I'll tell you why not. We're over 30, under 5 foot 9, and your back's playing up. <laughs> Look at the money. Starting pay, even while training, 475. Rise into 535. That's money bill. Plus the bunts. <laughs> Little extras when you're on duty in the marketplace. <laughs> it says plus house or rent in lieu. Houses. <laughs> Never thought of. I'll do that in French. Do we start again? <laughs> it says plus house or rent in lieu. <laughs> Houses available for married men. I'm not dressing up, I tell you. You don't have to. Well, not till you finish duty. You can keep your wig and skirt under your helmet and slip into them on the way home. <laughs> I reckon we can clean up 30 or 40 quid a week here. I don't think you're entering the police force with the right idea. <laughs> Police are to uphold the law. Well, of course, if we get away with it, we'll know how it's done and stop anybody else doing it. <laughs> We're doing them a favour, really. Uh, Fabian, have you stopped... <laughs> have you stopped to think how you're going to get into the force? Under 30, over 5 feet 9... We shall manage. Come, William, to the recruiting centre. Knees bend, feet spread out, 90 degrees. March. Next. Good afternoon, Inspector. Sergeant. Oh. Good afternoon, Sergeant. My friend and I wish to enlist in the constabulary, don't we, William? Yes. So if you would kindly produce the necessary forms... Hang I... on, hang on. Uh, let's have a few details first. We don't have anybody in the force. Anybody? Let's have a few details. Full names. You first, the elderly gentleman. William? <laughs> I mean you, trousers. <laughs> and full name. Anthony Aloysius St. John Hancock. Mother's name? Hilda Lloyd George Hancock. <laughs> Lloyd George? Well, time of war, national heroes, you know, they were all at it. <laughs> you should meet my auntie, Frida Jellico. Then there's Uncle Fred Valentino. He's no, very nice. Yes. Ilda Lloyd George. Father? Yes. <laughs> no. What was his name? His name, yes, I did meet him once. What was he doing? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, Alphonse Gallipoli. <laughs> All right, sign here. You next. Uh, William Montmorency, Beaumont Kerr, Spinster. <laughs> Father? No. Mother? No. All right, Romulus, where were you born? I don't know. Rumour has it I was raised by a herd of rogue kangaroos. Age? Between 21 and 43. Right. Sign here. Well, if we can have a notebook and pencil, we'll go out and apprehend some desperados, shall we? Uh, wait, what about your uniforms? Uniform, yes. I was thinking of something in midnight blue. Sort of... <laughs> Single-breasted, preferably. Not too tight round the waist. The old tapered shoulders. Mm, what sort of patrol car would you prefer? <laughs> nice royal blue drop or two-seater sports car, possibly? Yes, That'd with be... the white wall tyres and a mm, nice... Oi! Of... <laughs> Get your plates in those. <laughs> These... These aren't meant for feet, surely. They don't bend anywhere. No, but your feet do. Now, get them on. <laughs> now, helmets. What size head? Seven and a quarter. Hmm. Here's a six. Find an hammer to knock it on with. <laughs> now, you report to Superintendent Farnsworth for initial training. Dismiss. <laughs> now for six weeks. 
And look now, tomorrow we'll be going out of the nasty, cruel world as fully-fledged constables. Uh, this is by way of being a final examination. Step forward, P.C. Hancock. Sir? Will you please demonstrate lesson number 23? 23, certainly, sir. All right, come along, move along there. Stop blocking at the pavement, move along there. There's a good people, do you mind? Thank you very much. Move along, move along, please. Thank you. Excellent, uh, excellent, thank excellent. You. Eight out of ten. Oh, sorry. Yes, you were swinging your, uh, swinging your truncheon a little too wildly. You must aim it. Otherwise... <laughs> yes. Now, next, lesson 18. Cars parked in restricted streets. A Constable Kerr will assist Constable Hancock in this demonstration. Go. Hello, hello, hello. Are you the owner of this car? Yes, officer. I've been standing here for four days watching this car. <laughs> yes, four old days I've been standing here watching this car, and I, uh, I must ask you to move it. Why? It is parked upon my foot. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. Just the right touch of sarcasm. And remember... <laughs> Remember, gentlemen, the more motorists you can get into the courts on parking offences, the less time you'll have to spend on duty. <laughs> May we now have routine 29 on being asked the time. On being asked the time, yes. At the third stamp of me boot, it will be 3.33 and 10 seconds. At the third stamp of me boot, it will yes, be... Thank you, thank you, Hancock. Yeah. That's enough. Yes. Now, next... What is the object of point duty? Uh, that is to see how long a queue of cars you can collect at a given point. <laughs> when you think you have sufficient vehicles held up, you signal your colleague... <laughs> ..who goes down the tail end and nicks him for parking and horn blowing. Oh, very good. Well done. Yes, ten out of ten. I can see you'll make an excellent policeman, Hancock. I hereby present you with your notebook. Pencil, whistle, and truncheon, and may you spend many happy hours using them. <laughs> February the 3rd, first day on the beat, 10 o'clock p.m. Saw a tall, thin, sinister-looking man with a big head <laughs> loitering on a street corner. Crept up behind him and bashed him over the head with me truncheon. <laughs> Ten five p.m. Hid up dark alleyway <laughs> while they fitted new Belisha beacon. <laughs> but hey ho, and never mind. Tomorrow I start point duty. It wasn't my fault! If a bee was buzzing round your head, you'd try and swat it too! But hey ho! Never mind. I'm out in the patrol car tomorrow. <laughs> Good afternoon. We've been following you for three miles. You've exceeded the speed limit, dangerous driving, and... <laughs> yes, I thought so. You've been drinking. Oh, yes, I only had a couple in the canteen before I went on duty. I, I mean, we're all in the same force. <laughs> you understand? I was, I was on my way back to the stage. I, I... All right, I'll come quietly. <laughs> Start, is it, Hancock? I'm sorry, Sergeant. I... We can all make mistakes. Good grief. Mistakes? Two new Belisha beakers, 10,000 pounds damages for smashed up cars, 15 pound fine for dangerous driving, and now this. Sent round to make sure the pub's closed on time and found two hours later on top of Eros singing bawdy songs. <laughs> oh, it's not good enough. What's the matter, Hancock? Don't you like your work? Yes, it's not that. Well, aren't you happy with us? <laughs> happy, you don't know. Well, it's don't, static, you, I... don't you get on with the other boys? Oh, it isn't. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's, it's not that. <laughs> it's just that they they keep making fun of me, though. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you know what they call me? No. They call me Big Feet. <laughs> Just because I use me truncheon as a shoe tree. <laughs> I'll give you one more chance, Hancock. If you fail me this time, I'm afraid I must ask you to turn in your whistle. <laughs> I won't fail you, Sarge. I'll make good. I'm putting you on a new beat, a nice easy one. And try to keep out of trouble, Hancock. Here's a good boy. Up and down again. Boots, boots, boots. Who are you? Copper. Oh, good evening, sir. Sid. Oh, lovely Hancock. You frightened the life out of me in the fancy dress. What's the big idea? I joined the force. No need to laugh. Police Constable Hancock, Metropolitan Police at your service. Can I tell you the time? You in the knocks? Yes, and Bill, too. God blimey, what a piece of luck. Fun? Nothing. <laughs> yes, tell me, tell me, tell me. Are you on this beat every night? Yes, every night. Patrolling all these posh shops here. Tell me, whose beat's on the other side of the road? At Bill's. It gets better every minute. <laughs> so you two between you constitute the only law around here for about a mile and a half. That's right, yes. I don't believe it. Hey, have a shot of brandy. Oh, no, I mustn't really, thank you. <laughs> I'm on duty. Oh, dear. Oh, well, all right, then, here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just unscrew the top of my truncheon, pour it in there. <laughs> I got the idea from Moulin Rouge, you know. What are you doing out here this late at night? Oh, I'm just doing a bit of window shopping, you know. Any good jewellery shops along here? Just think now, wait a minute. Yes, there's, there's, there's a good one, three doors along here. Yes, very good quality stuff. Three doors along, you say? That's right, I'll show you. It's just along here. Just as well, me and Bill are on this beat. These shops don't have much protection on their windows, you know. They'll be robbed one of these days. <laughs> there you are. Look at that display, eh? £20,000 worth of stuff in there, at least. £26,565. <laughs> Lovely to look at, isn't it? Just like Bond Street. This is Bond Street. <laughs> is it? They never tell me, you know. They just take me to the edge of the street in a van and say, there you are, walk up and down there. Yeah. I suppose there's a burglar alarm somewhere. Oh, yes, naturally. It's just above the door, you see it? Oh, yeah. I suppose if it was cut, it'd ring. Oh, straight away, straight away. Yeah. Now, this sort can only be immobilised. You won't breathe a word of this to anybody, will you? Don't be no, silly, of course no, not. No, 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 no. Well... You do what they did in Rififi. <laughs> you saw Rififi? Ten times. Oh, well, there you are, then. Oh, it's that sort. Where you squirt a fire extinguisher liquid in the mechanism and gum it all up. You've got it. What are you writing in your notebook? Eh? Oh, uh, I just remember, it's my mother's birthday. I'll oh, give her my love, will you? Yes, I will, too. <laughs> hey, look, uh, about the window, how about the window? Supposing a brick was chucked through the window. Oh, that wouldn't do any good. A steel shutter comes down and traps his wrists. Hello. That's a new one. Yeah, of course a bit of wood can be jammed in. That stops it. Jam a bit of wood in. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, even then it's doubtful if they'd get away. I mean, with you and Bill patrolling the street. Yes. Oh, we're no mugs. What? We'd spot them immediately. As long as they didn't do it between 3.33 and 3.37 in the morning. 3.37. Why, what happens then? Well, the road bends a bit there, and just for those four minutes, me and Bill are out of sight. You can't hear a thing that goes on down here. Not a dicky bird, but then... <laughs> they're not likely to know about that, so we're not worried, you know. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It's very nice of you. Yes, that's all right. Not at all. It's very nice to talk to you again, Sydney. Good night. Ta-da. Boots, 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 marching up and down again. <laughs> here is the news. <laughs> 
thieves broke into a Bond Street jeweller's shop this morning between 3.33 and 3.37 while the patrolling constable was out of earshot. <laughs> Will anybody who can give any information please communicate with the chief constable? Well, Hancock, these robberies happened on your beat. How do you account for them? Well, it's obvious. They've been getting inside information. I mean, we constables can only do our duty up to a point. I mean, we can't fight against leakage of information as blatant as this. I hate the employees. Yes. They chat irresponsibly to people they don't know. Beat strangers. That's the sort of thing we're fighting. The helpless against such diabolical cunning we are. Here we are. If I were you, mate, I should warn all shops in the area to guard against careless talk. I go past the bank at 2.23 to check the brand new alarm system. Yeah? They're very careful about it because of the bullion they've got in the vaults. I see. But I don't know what they worry about because the only way to get in is through the ceiling of the lawyer's office above it. With a pneumatic drill wrapped in a blanket. Precisely. <laughs> Then at 2.34, I proceed in an easterly direction to the post. We are waiting for an explanation, Hancock. Well, how was I to know it wasn't the lawyer going into his office with a pneumatic drill? <laughs> yes, sir, I admit I opened the door for him. A mistake anybody could make. He said he was a lawyer, he even had his wig on. <laughs> That's enough, Hancock. Since you've been on this beat, every shop in the street has been robbed except one. I've told you, it's a leakage of inside information. Well, now we're going to set a trap. All right, then. Well, now, now eventually, the, these thieves will obviously try and rob the last shop as well. I've done my best. Well, all right. Now. <laughs> Every Friday, a young lady cashier leaves this shop with a week's takings and goes to the bank. My plan is this. We will employ a decoy. Another young lady will leave the shop at the correct time with an empty bag. We will be lying in wait, and when the thieves strike, we will jump out... And overpower them. Hooray! <laughs> the question is, who shall be used as a decoy? I know the very woman. My secretary. Just the girl. It'd take a gang of ten to knock her down. No. But, Miss Pugh, your country needs you. Stop pointing your finger at me. You look like Lord Kitchener. <laughs> I'm not risking my life to get you out of trouble. There is no risk. There'll be half the force ready to pounce on them the minute anybody tries anything. Honestly, the first time in my life anybody's likely to try anything, half the police force are going to jump out and stop him. <laughs> He's not going to try that sort of thing. After all these years, any sort of thing would be welcome. But, Griselda, I've promised the superintendent that you'll do it. Well, I'm not. Now go away. I've got to finish sewing See You Later Alligator on my sweater before the concert tonight. <laughs> You'll just have to find someone else. How do I look, Bill? Sensational. The skirt's a little too baggy. <laughs> and you haven't got the colouring for a blonde wig, but otherwise perfect. I'll be glad when I get out of these high heels. They're screwing up my bunion something horrible. That won't be long. Hey, it's time to go down the bank with a bag. Are you ready, Hancock? I'm ready, super. I still think we ought to have found somebody else. It's not right, you know, me, a policeman dressed as a woman. It's overstepping the bounds of duty. Silence! Go out now. It's one o'clock. Get out of the street. We'll be watching your every move. Good luck. My seam's straight. <laughs> Nothing suspicious so far. No one's taking any notice of him. Perhaps they're not going to try anything today. Hey, hey wait a minute. Look, there's a man following him. Look, the fellow in the trilby. He's, he's crossing the road after him. Mm, I think we may be onto something here. Look, Hancock stopped. Yes, that was the fella. Oh, gee, Tub looks worried. Get ready, Kerr. I think this may be it. No, wait. Wait until he actually snatches the bag. Yes, look. The fella's going up to Tub. He's, he's tapping him on the shoulder. He's, he's saying something to him. Good morning, Cheeky. <laughs> Want to come to the pictures with me? Oh, 
up it, up it. Go on, get out of it, get out of it. Go on, go on. Go on home, go home. Don't be like that. I saw you wink at me. I didn't wink at you. Me false eyelash flopped down. <laughs> Look, buzz up, buzz up. Go on, up it, up it. I think you're smashing. <laughs> I'll slosh you in a minute. Oh, that's the I like girls with a bit of spirit. Uh, <laughs> bit of fire. I bet you're Mexican or something, aren't you? I'm not Mexican. I come from Cheam, if it's of any interest. Now, clear off, mate. There's a good boy. You might get hurt. Well, nice little spitfire, aren't you? <laughs> you fascinating mint, you. <laughs> come here. Do you mind? Let me go. How dare you? I'm Andy, so I know your type. Ah, stop struggling. <laughs> I know you like it. <laughs> you girls are all the same. You tantalise a man till you drive him to distraction. <laughs> Yeah, what about coming to the pictures? You're making a big mistake. <laughs> Things aren't what they seem. <laughs> Go and find somebody else. No, I want you. <laughs> I like them with a bit of meat on them. <laughs> what do you mean, a bit of meat? I'll fetch you such a slosh across the face with my hand bag in a minute. Oh, no, stop messing about. What's your name, dearie? Mind your own business. I see you as a... 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 a Laura. Do you? Well, I see you as a Charlie. <laughs> now, look. Let me give you a word of warning. There are a hundred policemen hiding in the shop doorways along here, waiting to spring out on any man who talks to me. Oh, you must be important. <laughs> well, those bodyguards, I bet you're an Eastern princess or something. Do I look like an Eastern princess? <laughs> a beauty like yours would fit in anywhere, my little goose. Come and have pictures with me. I'm not coming... What's on? No, no, I, I can't go. I've got a job to do. Now, go on up it, please. Oh, let me carry your bag, then. No, no, no go give us on. It. No, come on, me. give us it. Go on. You'll be sorry. Give us it back. No, no, the least a gentleman can do is carry a lady's handbag. <laughs> Ha-ha! All right, you're under arrest. Me? Me? What for? We've been waiting for you to try and snatch that bag, and now we've caught you in the act. You'd better come quietly. And I haven't done nothing. I'm just a young lad trying to find him... <laughs> Trying to find himself a bit of fun. <laughs> You're wanted on a charge of robbing 49 shops, three factories, a warehouse and a bank. What do you got to say? What are the girls like in prison? <laughs> So there it is, Sid, we finally caught him. He made the one mistake they all eventually make. Yeah, they never learn, do they? So now he's doing 20 years and serves him right. Let's hope it serves as a lesson that crime doesn't pay. True, true. I like your new Rolls Royce, Sid. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> oh, the white one. Yeah, not bad. Well, I suppose I'd better get back on duty. It's funny about that, you know. The only thing we never cleared up was where he was getting all his information from. <laughs> yeah, it's a dead mystery. Uh, you're on another beat these days, are you? That's right. Tower of London. The old crown jewels, you know. <laughs> oh, the crown jewels. Now, there's a nice all for someone, eh? No, 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 impossible. Ooh. Never get in. No? Of course, there's a special lock on the door, you see. <laughs> you can only open it if you've got this key or a duplicate. That key? That's it, that's it. What are you pressing it in the soap for? Well, a souvenir, you know. Souvenir? Yeah. How patriotic. I do admire that. <laughs> anyway, the only possible way to get past all those beef feeders would be to knock me out. Me. <laughs> Take my uniform off, whip my pass, and pretend he's me. Well, that won't be easy. It will not. And he can't do that until 1.33. What time? 1.33, when I pass the alcove where nobody can see me. But yeah. then, nobody's likely to know about that, so I reckon all things being equal, or taking it. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm.
This has been Hancock's Half Hour, starring Tony Hancock with Sidney James, Bill Carr, Hattie Jakes and Kenneth Williams. Theme and incidental music composed and conducted by Wally Stott. Show written by Alan Simpson and Ray Galton. The program which was recorded was produced by Dennis Mayne Wilson. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Hancock's Half Hour. And don't forget, we're going to be back tomorrow with Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. That's going live at 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at touradate.co.uk or you can message using any of our social media. Also, we've got Patreon supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow. Shall I? Listen, let's make a date. Brett's old time radio show. Love you. Bye.